Hi everybody, welcome back to Art Block. You know me, I'm Cable Provider. I made an ending for these. I'm just gonna put this out here right now. I will not remember it. And that's because today I am talking to my good friend and guest, Lorian, and I'm, I'm just ready to hear some information. How you doing, Lauren? Hello! Hi! I'm doing great, doing great. It is, uh, it is, I've had a nice family supper, I'm filled up with alcohol, and I'm ready to talk your ear off. Hey, you know what? I'm ready to have my ears talked off. They, they, they've had it too good for too long. So? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know what? I got a good place to start, because this is actually something, uh, that came up with like, uh, it's partially in tandem a question I have and some questions I've heard Dan ask quite a bit in terms of music. But mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, uh, the actual process of, like, you know, arranging the tracks, like, getting everything mastered, going through that whole, like, uh, rigmarole of making the song, like, complete, there's a lot you have to deal with. Can you tell us a little yes. bit about, like, your experiences with, like, learning and finding your way that's comfortable for you doing that? Okay, so I th so I think we'll start where all good stories start at the beginning, um, and how I got into this whole music making process. Um, so back in school, when I was around thirteen, uh, I started taking guitar lessons, mm -hmm. and my guitar instructor gave me the option: I could either just keep learning how to play guitar as a standard, or I could learn uh, production. So he would, he had sort of, there was this school, there was this project where a bunch of students would get together and they'd make a song, make an album uh, produced by the guitar teacher who was a, you know, part-time producer as well as a teacher. And they'd be sold for charity at the end of the year. Oh, so in the, in, in the interim weeks, I would write music and then go into the guitar lessons and record the music that I had written. And... I hope to God no one finds those CDs <laughs> because it was f fucking awful. Yeah. Um, but uh, I so yeah, I started fairly early. Yeah. Um, to me, it's and because he, my guitar teacher took care of the majority of the production recording side of it, I was far more involved in the songwriting aspect. See, I as a musician. I feel like my strengths lie predominantly in the structure and uh, arrangement of songs. Um, you know, I don't consider myself particularly virtuosic in any one instrument. I am not a. I am a. a part, I'm a decent singer, but I I lean heavily on tuning to make it sound as good as it does in the songs. I will be. I will admit that. Mm -hmm. um, but my strengths lie in the sort of actually like songwriting um, because that's what I sort of focused on uh, from a very early age about 13 12 13 or so yeah you're a lyricist you're a lyricist yeah and also not just the lyricist but these prospect of like instruments arranging and like when I say arranging mm. it's kind of like um what how are the song is structured like the intro chorus verse taking elements from those parts like uh call and response you know songwriting things um and so and then throughout school uh by the time i finished school uh, one of my gap year i'd written an album uh it is another album i wish no one to ever hear because <laughs> it was terrible um and then uh i at a loss for what i wanted to do because i excelled in maths and science but my passion was music. But I didn't study music at school because at GCSE I hadn't really gotten into it yet. And so, and it was all classical stuff like Beethoven and Mozart and that kind of stuff which bored me at the time. Uh, so I didn't study music, so I couldn't really do music. for, for So I discovered a university degree in York, uh, which was uh, music production or music technology, I should say which is kind of the technical side of music in terms of recording. And uh, not just that, but it did a bit of vocal synthesis, did a bit of um, uh, all kinds of different disparate topics. It was kind of a jack of all trades. And having passed, having uh, graduated with honors for my bachelor's degree, I wanted to do a master's degree of music production, which is definitely more narrowed in on what I'm passionate about, which is the creative process of making recorded music. 
No, and it definitely shows in a lot of your work. Like, um, I I, I had uh, checked out some of your, I believe there's some of your more recent songs. I honestly, I don't remember exactly when it came out, but uh, I have a, I've had a World of Wonder stuck in my head for about a couple days now. Yeah. And I, that, I'm particularly proud of that one. Um, yeah, and so, in turn, to come back to your original question, the processes, I, so I sort of get started with the songwriting aspect early on, and then I sort of have taught myself through university and my own studies the sort of more technological side of things. Until about my third year of university, I wrote music ex almost exclusively on my phone. Um, so oh, no I had way. Garage, I had GarageBand iOS app, and I pushed that app to its limits because I was far too intimidated by proper music t uh, software to fully like dive into it for the longest time. And eventually, I kind of like maxed out the possibilities of what I could do on that app, and finally decided, all right, it's time to learn some proper software. And that's when I finally picked up Ableton, Ableton Live, which is my predominant what I use. Um, and yeah, it is. It takes a long time to learn these complicated softwares, but it's so rewarding when you do. Um, and yeah, the technological side of like the mixing, the mastering effects, and all that. Uh, came th partly through university, partly through my own experimentation. Mixing and mastering, I learned a lot from university. Um, and then, yeah, and then sort of the... And that's kind of how I split the time. I would say my mixing and mastering is definitely a, a less enjoyable part of the process for me. Mm. For me, this, the enjoyable part is the actual crafting of a song. And the part where, uh, well, if you've been keeping an eye on the streams I've been doing with Louis, uh, shout out to Louis Vasquez, um, uh, you can see the, that we've been just writing a song together. And the process of figuring out like the chords and the melodies and how they all tie together and harken back to previous moments in the song, that to me and is the fun part. And when you finally have something together and you hit play and hear it for the first time, and it's mm. good, and you'll feel like, oh my god, I've created something amazing. That is that is the moments that really like call to me, that really make me feel like I'm doing something amazing, and I'm loving this. And and then I have to begrudgingly do the technical side to make it actually sound good to <laughs> most listeners. <laughs> but that, that's so cool to hear it, like, and to get a sense of like you know what goes through your head when you reach that point it's like that's the mm. that's the all oh, right that this is it like everything's in place you know even if it's not technically the way that it needs to be right now like you see the you see the big yeah. picture and it just gives you that feeling. yeah I'm, I'm definitely a big picture writer um i feel like a lot of musicians fall into a trap of getting caught up on detail um you know is this kick sounding absolutely the perfect way that it should be you know, like, is the tone exactly right? And I I think it partly comes from having used GarageBand, uh, where there is one kick sound, one violin sound, one piano sound. I kind of brush past those details a lot and focus on the big picture. And I feel like what that's resulted in is my songs are a more compellingly written i don't want to sound i don't want to sound um arrogant or what's the word i'm looking for um i don't want to come across as conceited but i feel like the songs themselves are i'm very proud of my writing but i often skip over like you know, the fine details are important as well and i sometimes like skip over those a little bit but i feel like most people probably wouldn't notice and but a musician might listen to it and go like, hmm, yeah, no, that kick is not a bit... I would have chosen a better kick, or I would have chosen mm. a better this or that, or whatever. But to me, that's not as important as the actual, like, grand picture of what are we creating, what narrative are we creating for the song. I can completely, like, uh, resonate with that. It's it, it, it's funny, because different mediums, but that's kind of how I work with when I draw. Like, 
I I like to see a full like like completed image and like see how the little pieces work together. The For sure, little yeah. details and like you know shading and blurring like I'll sometimes like take little uh, I'll find workarounds for things that it's like I'm not super familiar technically so it's it's interesting to hear that you know those same like thought processes can still be applied in music like I actually never even considered oh, that to go that way very much so I think it could be applied to most art forms um, I think I think little details are important are definitely important but I think when you're first starting uh, a, a, an art piece or a mu or a song the bigger picture should take precedent at least to, at least that's how i like to work big picture should take precedent once you have something then you can go in and fine tune the the finer details oh, no doubt no doubt that's it so in terms of like uh you know like actually seeing the big picture for things and like you know when you start creating a new project uh, i'm curious uh, I, I know, like, in terms of music, nobody has, like, you know, one genre of music they like. You know, you should... I, mm, I like, yeah. personally, I like a little bit of everything. I love finding something I haven't heard before. Um, yes. When you set out to work on something new, uh, do you mm. have any, like, go-to genres you like to start with? Or uh, what's your... So, my... I'd have, I would have historically said rock. I don't think if you listen to a lot of my music, rock is a primary factor. Um, I also, orchestral music, I listen to a lot of video game soundtracks. And particularly the fusion of rock and orchestral is a very sweet spot for me. Oh, um, so good. Even, even like World of Wonder, the song you mentioned earlier, it's a very anime song. It's a very like a rocky song. Um, there's still a choir in the background there. I can't resist it. I spent... <laughs> entirely too much money on buying the best software you can get for like making authentic sounding choirs strings horns you name it and i want to use them um i love like my 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 approach to genre and like instrumentation is uh bigger is better um you know i'm a very i'm a maximalist uh, composer and i've i've recently sort of gotten to the stage where i'm trying to dial that back and make it more subtle uh, but my go-to is just, like, throw everything in and then just take things away. Almost. Yeah, no, like, uh, almost working backwards in a sense. Like, you know, have more and yeah. then refine it down. Like, um, exactly, yes. Because, uh, trust me, I, I I know how you compose stuff. You're, you you single-handedly made, like, the ending to the... Lori, if, for anybody who doesn't know, Lorian did the music for the uh, final parts of the uh, Sleepwalkers campaign I did on the channel. Yes. And those songs, like, for me personally as a fan of uh, Kingdom Hearts and, like, hearing the Yokoshima Mora tracks all the time, you invoked the same emotion that I would feel from those tracks, and you really brought something special to that game. Like, I, I don't know if I've ever properly thanked you enough for how much I enjoyed those. Oh, you did. You did. And I will say I am exceptionally proud of those tracks, particularly the final boss theme. Mm, I think um, it was Nothing Struggle. Nothing struggle, yeah. That's nothing struggle is my is probably my favorite orchestral piece I've composed. Um, that started. I mean, that particular song was inspired by a very specific chord progression I heard, um, and it's the chord progression I use when the it's just the string section by itself. So it's like you've got this sort of like uh, and then it sort of gets a bit darker and then suddenly it all whoosh, cuts out to just a string section the chord progression in there is taken from like an old 1950s cinema soundtrack i forget the exact one because it was um it was an example i took there's a youtube video saying about like let's analyze this beautiful chord progression and i thought this is a stunning chord progression that's very evocative of that emotion that you feel in kingdom hearts like kind of like wistful sorrow tug like tugging at your heartstrings feeling mm -hmm. and i thought that's that's exactly what i want to use um and so i built off a melody from that chord progression and then worked backwards from there to build up the rest of the song and that leads me on to another point in terms of uh inspiration uh borrow ideas don't not not even borrow steal ideas <laughs> but make it your own uh, art does not exist in a vacuum, and I learned a lot of what I know 
uh, particularly in my early days of songwriting, by shamelessly plagiarizing my favorite music. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my first couple of my the album I wrote in uh, school and the music I did before that was very derivative, very derivative. And so, but through doing that, I learned a lot about what it is about the songs that I like that makes me like them. And therefore, how I can then apply that in an original way. So my advice to anyone who's starting songwriting is take your favorite songs and try and rip them off. Try and just shamelessly plagiarize them. Don't publish them for the love of God, but make that a personal project of yours as an exercise in learning what it is about the songs you like that makes you like them. That's a really good approach to take for something like that. Like really, because it's easy to say you like a song, but like to really explain what it is about it that you like so mm. much, it's like, yeah. That's, that's and through that, you. Oh, that's so cool. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut yeah. you off. I'm like, I'm a little yeah. taken aback because it was nice. And, and through that, I've there's certain techniques that I use a lot in songwriting that have, um, I find, uh, to be really potent and powerful. Um, an example, a great example is uh, there's a song by Linkin Park. Linkin Park were always my favorite band growing up. And there's a song by theirs called When They Come For Me from their album A Thousand Sons. And there's something I noticed in that song whereby the throughout the first sort of half of the song, it's what I would like to call riff-based music. So there's no real chord progression. It's like bam, 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 like kind of that kind of music. Mm-hmm. And then, and then over that kind of like heavy core, heavy guitar chugging, it's like, ah, 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 it's like kind of really dark and dramatic. And then halfway through, after the second chorus, uh, it introduces the chord progression. Just like this pretty little chord progression, etc. And it goes, oh, when they come for me. Come for me, I'll be gone. And then that same refrain, they ah, 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 repeat, but now over the chord progression. And because it's now gone from like this dark riff bass to suddenly this beautiful chord progression, but the same melody as before, like the chorus repeats, but now with the chord progression, it just has this elevating, uh, exciting effect that just like makes the song go like, oh, wow, it's all come together. Oh, I and so that's, that. mm. yeah, exactly. It's it's not, you can't really, it's a hard emotion to describe. It's just like the, the old married with like this new thing that you've introduced and the new thing is pretty and beautiful combined with like the powerful stuff of what came before. Um, that's, so that's something I like to use a lot. Starting off with something that's very dark and doesn't have a very discernible chord progression and then later introducing a chord progression while repeating like the old melodies or chorus or whatever to change it up in a way that's like new and exciting that's a um that approach is like very like it, it resonates with me a lot i don't i don't really have like the proper words to express it like mm. but it's like hearing you describe it like really invokes like that's how i like to look at it. like when i find songs i like those are sort of the things i enjoy listening to as well or but see but that's the thing by analyzing and uh, borrowing ideas from your favorite songs, you learn these songwriting techniques. You learn um, these little tricks that you can use to elevate your own songwriting. Um, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of different examples like that. I'm, I don't want to get like, this podcast could entirely devolve into me naming lots of tiny little <laughs> examples like that one. Uh, and I don't think it'd make for very engaging listening. Uh, it's a I, it's an idea I've been playing around of doing like a, a, a video on some of them. Um, there was actually one university paper I wrote about a different effect in songwriting, which actually was the highest scoring uh, paper I wrote in my university career. Uh, which is like the idea of a, uh, if I just simplify it to a sort of analogy, it's like a musical plot twist. Um, great example of this would be Stairway to Heaven. So Stairway to Heaven Throughout the entire first half of the song, there is this very soft and gentle, like, flute, uh, 
the song music it's very folky acoustic guitars and then it builds up and builds up and builds up and then all of a sudden there's this rocking guitar solo and it's often considered one of the best guitar solos in rock however i posit that this guitar solo is only as good as it is because of the lengthy build up and because it's been it is comes out of left field so much it's a plot twist um, if that if the song started with that guitar solo, it would not be exceptional. Yeah, it's, um, but you gotta it's, have it's the set dressing. Of, Everything yeah, has you gotta to have be... the set dressing. And so, the, the idea is that um, if you can surprise your listener with something new and exciting in the song, uh, that could be a really powerful tool. However, you want to be very careful. Like any good plot twist, you've got to foreshadow it. So, if you just have you know. If all of a sudden you're watching, I don't know, Star Wars and, uh, I don't know, something stupid like uh, Palpatine is Rey's father comes up. You're just like, where the fuck did that come from? I don't you know, think they'll do that. No, that'd be stupid. <laughs> but because they had did nothing to foreshadow it. It was literally pulled out their ass. And so you got same with music. If you, if you want to, for, when you want to introduce something new, have a little bit of a hint of that new thing earlier in the song. Could be the melody. Could be the instrument, say, if you're bringing guitar in later as the twist, have a little gentle guitar thing in the background that's almost inaudible, but just enough for the person to hear. Enough for it to get in their head, subconsciously, so when it comes in, it's not completely out of left field. Um, yeah, that's that's one I'm also very fond of. No doubt. And the way you're describing this, too, like, um, at least what I'm taking away from this, it it's really interesting to hear about like your approach to doing all this, because it sounds... It sounds like writing a book. It sounds like trying to write yeah. a story. And Oh, that's that's the thing. Songwriting is a narrative. You are writing a story, but it is a story set to music told over three minutes or five minutes or up to fucking 20 minutes if you're a prog band, you know. <laughs> uh, some prog bands literally make it like a very deliberate narrative, like, you know. But yeah, all, song, all songwriting is storytelling. That's what you're doing. Even instrumental music, you're telling an emotional story. Um, uh, even if not a, a, a specifically a narrative story. And I think that's important for people to uh, like keep in mind when they're songwriting, is that what is the story that I'm telling? And like any good story, you've got to establish a setup in the verse, and then you've got to have something in the chorus to like, like make it make, se make the setup make sense. Um, you know, so yeah, songwriting is storytelling is, as far as I'm concerned. And it definitely shows like with, um, with the way things go, um, with it being, a with it being storytelling with, you know, taking people through a narrative, you know, a lot of times those things can get very personal to like the person creating it. Do you, mm -hmm. um, how do you, how do I want to phrase this question? when something's personal to you that you're working on, do you ever have any, like, um, is there, do you have any, like, self-imposed limit to where you, like, try to reach into yourself and find what you want to write for? Or do you, are so, you just, like, a complete it's in, like, open book? So, I, uh, I'm an open book. Uh, I am on the autistic spectrum, and it is well documented that autistic people overshare. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I definitely am prone to oversharing. I, the rule I set myself is never end a song on a sad note. Always, always, even in my saddest songs, and end it positively. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, an example uh, of a song I released last year, uh, it's called Do Something. I released it in uh, 1st of October. Uh, start of ADHD Awareness Month, and it was about my ADHD. Uh, early that year, I was having a really, really rough time mental health-wise, uh, primarily built on like self-loathing and self-doubt and frustration due to, as at the time, undiagnosed ADHD. And having, when it was diagnosed in the beginning of the year, that gave me the sort of like the framework to like think about it and then write that song. And the refrain is, you know, it's like, do something. Please just do something. Please do anything. Why can't I do anything? And the song is dark. It's sad. Um, it's very emotional. Um, 
you know, the, the more I try to change, the more I stay the same. Um, and then, you know, the, the bridge of the song, like, builds up in this cacophony of, like, whispering voices of self-doubt and self-loathing in the background. Uh, very difficult to listen to, much less write, because um, I was putting all of my most negative thoughts right there in the lyrics, unfiltered. But at the end, I was very deliberate in having the crescendo of awfulness build to a head and then break away into soft bird song, soft synths and a very gentle choir saying, this time will be different. I, I'll, I will fight as long as I can to eventually be able to do anything, do everything. And ending it on a hopeful note. And I think that... Um, I've not... It's not a very radio-friendly song. It's six. It's over six minutes long. Um, but the few people who have listened to it have expressed a deep empathy of the message that I've sent, which has been so... makes me so happy to hear that I've been able to reach people in that way. And I think it's because I have this rule of always end on a hopeful note, even if it is still bittersweet, is uh, very important to me. Because acknowledging sadness is an important and good thing to do, but I, I never want to let it uh, just become uh, self-indulgent. Um, not self-indulgent, what's the word? What's the phrase I'm looking for? Like, sort of like self-flagellating or self-like, or like hopelessness. Mm. I always want to, I always want to give the, give the sense that, yeah, things are bad, but there is reason to be hopeful. There is, there is, you know, we can do this. We can make it through this. And that's, that's actually, I mean, I'm working on an album and that's a very central theme to the album. Um, you know, the songs I've released so far, so Find Your Light is one of the one of the first singles I released. Um, in the silence, in the darkness, find your voice, find your light. World of Wonder. Um, come to a world of wonder, uh, see it torn asunder by those with all to lose. You know, the world is being ravaged by capitalism, you know, you know all these parties looking for selfish gain. And then it ends with fight for this world of wonder. Uh, we have no other. Let's take back our world. Uh, hope in the, in the face of uh, a very bleak situation. Um, and that's a very central core theme to my songwriting and my lyricism. And the emotion definitely does get conveyed. Like it's it's very clear like how much of you goes into the work that you do and. Part of the reason I actively really wanted you as a guest for Art Block is I wanted to know more about that, and I wanted to hear like you know straight from you like, mm. how these how this works and like, it's it's hard because mm -hmm. some I, I it's a lot of my I'm very I'm a very emotional person um, and it's easy to say like a lot of the songs I write are pure inspired by my emotions but here's the thing you can't always rely on that alone to be fuel your um like to get you through art block if there's just nothing you're feeling you've got to find the story you want to tell and if you're sitting there at your computer and like not struggling to come up with an idea don't think of what song do i want to write think of what story do i want to tell um, it could be something in the news, it could be something personal, you know, classic, the most universal story you hear in songs, one of the most, is falling in love, or falling out of love. That's a story. That's someone telling the story of their relationships. It could be political, it could be something in the news that's got you riled up about the world at large, and you want to, you want to express how you feel about this topic, um... And that could be the story you're telling. It could be a made-up story. You know, you've got things like, uh, again, coming back to prog rock, Rush 2112, the story of this dystopian future where this uh, musician finds a guitar 
and learns how to play it and brings music to the council, but they reject it. It's a fanciful story, but it's a story nonetheless. Um, life is a story. And music is a reflection of life. And so, if you're not coming up with the music, if you're, uh, that's how I would start, is what story do I want to tell? Yeah, find, find where, find your story to tell through your music. And yeah. if you convey it earnestly, I would say, the right people will find it. Yes, and absolutely. You'll be able to make that connection, which is what I personally feel is the main purpose of art, no matter the medium. It's an avenue for people to connect with other people. I, sh I should also clarify, that is one avenue um, of, of finding inspiration. Uh, music, uh, most of my music from um, the story first, but there's a lot of right which comes from the, uh, the music first. Um, what I would advise uh, any musician who's listening is there are numerous. Um, this only this works mostly if you have an iPhone, unfortunately, because Android. There are problems with the infrastructure of Android software and hardware that make music apps more difficult to program for them. Uh, but there are some that exist. But uh, get there are myriad apps you can download which allow you to just fiddle around with some musical synths that make it really easy for you to just sketch out ideas. Um, uh, one I used a lot was Propellerhead, Propellerhead Reason. No, sorry, Propellerhead Figure. Reason is their sort of uh, bigger uh, uh, digital audio workstation. Propellerhead Figure. It's a simple little app that, make, that lets you... Um, quickly jot down some loops of synths, jam out something as you're on the go, or if you're on the train, or uh, have a moment to yourself on the toilet. Um, it's not the only one. There's other good ones. Um, Roly have a very good uh, one. Yeah, there's tons of apps out there. And just, like, play around with it. Save some ideas. Come back to them later. See if they inspire you. Uh, a lot of my songs that I wrote were inspired by uh, little synths Part passages that I wrote in those apps that I then developed into bigger ideas. So that's another bit of advice I would always give: is have a musical sketchbook in the form of Ooh, a lot a really of these apps nice you can get. Um, because you don't have always have access to your piano or your guitar or whatever instrument you have, so you need to have something which you can have on the go, where you can save ideas for later. And there are so many amazing apps you can download, which uh, facilitate just such a process. That's, that's like a very, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you, I don't even mind if it's on recording, off recording, on recording, I'll be straight up with you. Like, I, I am like, so like, there's so many things, like I wanna do more music and hearing a <clears> lot <throat> of like the advice you're giving and different steps I can even take and like different things I would love to try, it's, it, it's in, I, didn't, I never even considered doing anything like that. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, I would pull up some examples, but my phone just died, so never mind. <laughs> no worries. Um, I think honestly, the I think maybe a good way to round this off is uh, final piece of art block that we do is we all artists, no matter our medium, we eventually will hit a wall. There's always going to be some difficulties yes. that we face. And they're always going to be hard. Yep. What advice would you give for somebody that's maybe going through it right now? Step away. You, art is a very important thing. If you ca if you ca if you have the opportunity to step away, I should I should clarify. Some people might have contracts that are that need to be done uh, in certain deadlines, and this are uh, I will I have different I have differing advice for them but if you have the luxury of time step away go do something else find more inspiration find more stories um if you are you know the music does not exist in a vacuum music is a reflection of our shared experience through life and its many ups and downs and if you are not 
out in the world experiencing life, you have fewer things to pull from for inspiration. Um, go uh, try something you've never done before. Go uh, pick up a new hobby. Go maybe try wake, maybe try um, paddle boarding if you've never done that before. I don't know. Um, go just do anything else. And those moments in your wider life will become inspiration for your art. And that, that doesn't just go for music. That goes for any art. You need to have the experience of life in a wider world to be able to make the best art that you can. And the more experiences in the wider world you have to pull from, the, the easier it is to overcome a wall of art block. Um, if you are on a deadline and there is just one... Th there is, if you're just like, I need to keep working right now, but... Um, I'm just, you know, I need to keep work. Don't force yourself. I would say actually that advice even applies if you're on a deadline, but just make it a shorter break. Like, just step, aside, step away for half an hour. Um, it depends on the nature of what what is uh, what the art block is. Um, but just going back to, like, something where you can improvise, I would advise is a good thing. Uh, any musician who is composing will have, without doubt, a library of uh, instruments that they can like play around with. Maybe find a new sound that will spark some inspiration. Um, but yeah, my big advice would be uh, just take some time. If you if you cannot break, you shouldn't be trying to force yourself through a wall when if you find some time away will make that wall a lot smaller. And eventually, you know, I've I've taken a big step away from music for the last couple of weeks. I had a incredibly hectic and stressful Christmas um, and I took a much needed uh, week off in the new year. And now I'm itching to get back into it. Whereas before I was kind of dreading the art block, the wall. Now I'm excited now i'm raring to go i've got so many ideas that i want to put out there um that the excitement is, is kind of back because you can burn yourself out you can burn yourself out and so just you shouldn't feel guilty for needing some time away to break yourself out of that i think that's a very long-winded roundabout way of saying uh, just stop for a moment and take a breather. Hey, you know what? It's less like you. It's less long-winded than half the tangents I have a tendency to go off on, and it's super informative. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. But, Lauren, I really want to thank you for your time today. It was uh, you're most incredibly welcome. Pleasure getting to talk to you, dude. Oh um, yeah. It, for anybody listening to this. Take take those words to heart. Take any of the other art blocks you've checked out before. I, if you if you like what I'm doing here, I sincerely, it's all I really want. I just want to make something that we can all have together. And you know, if anybody's in a bit of an art block, maybe come check out an art block. Maybe we got some here for you. Yeah, I think that's a it's a wonderful idea you've put together here. It's a very very cool little thing. <laughs> Thank you. And to the rest of everybody here, I want you all to have a good night. I, or day, mm. I don't know what time this, you'll be listening to this. But have a good. Have a good. Have a good. <laughs> have a good. Have a good. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Gravity! Okay, oh, God. Oh, yeah, you hit it. 18 no. fours. All right, it's going to take 18 force damage. As you see it, like, it began to raise its arm, but you sort of force its arm back down a little bit. But it looks undeterred by that. Like, that attack really didn't do much to it. Uh, I'm just gonna take my free action to just shout, Let me take the brunt of it and you guys just circle around him. <laughs>